Welcome back to Tabletop Jason. Today I'll be taking a quick look at Arboretum. And I hate that word because I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it the right way. So if I'm not, feel free to leave a comment and call me an idiot. It is a card game for two to four players, ages eight and up. And a game takes approximately 30 minutes. So let's look at the setup. The initial setup is just slightly annoying because you need to sort out all the cards into the 10 different suits or types. I think they call them species in the instruction book. And the art is beautiful, but it is kind of hard to tell them apart when you sort them out quick. But you'll use cards based on how many people are playing. So if you're playing a four player game, you use all 10 sets. If you're playing a three player game, you only use eight. So you can pick any two and just put them aside. And if you're doing a two player game, you only use six. So the number of cards you use is a little bit less if you have less people playing. So you take your six piles, shuffle them together, pick a dealer and each player, or in this case, both players, will just kind of shuffle them up. Both players are dealt seven cards. So there, this will be a sample hand. Other player would get seven. You leave a space for the deck. Each player has their own distinct discard pile. So the goal is to play cards that will score you combinations, that will give you certain points. It comes with a score pad that just shows each tree type. And at the end of the game, you'll tally up your points and uh, that'll be how you determine the winner. Ideally, you'd have a little bit of every type of card or a lot bit of one, maybe two. You start the turn, you draw two cards. So right away, you're stuck with nine cards in your hand to sort through. But during your turn, you draw two cards. You can draw from either the draw deck or any player's discard, and it can be any combination, including your own discard. Then you play one card, and then you discard a card. So you're gonna play looking for a score, and a score is to find a path, and I'll go over the paths in just a second. You wanna find where you have a low card and a high card. So are these all low cards? So here we've got like a four, whoops, I dropped one. You've got like a four and a seven of this suit here. You have a three, four. So let's say you'll play that four. Then you have to discard something discard something that you think you're not gonna use. So we'll discard that, let's say. And discarding isn't a huge deal because you can always draw from the discard pile. So that'd be your turn. Your next, your opponent would go, and then your next turn, you would again draw two. You can look at any discards if you wanna draw from that, or just draw another, I'll just draw another. So now, once you play a card, it has to be adjacent to the card you just played in any direction. But you want to try to set up a path. I'll show you an example path in a minute here. Um, so we've got a four. So let's say we'll play this six there and then discard something. Discard a two, this is kind of random. Your next turn you draw. Okay, now we've actually got a little bit to show how to set up a path, I think. Yeah, okay, so we have a three. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna build, you wanna build a path. A path has to start and end with the same type. The cards in the middle don't necessarily matter, but the ones on the end do. So for example, let's say at the end of the game, you have something like, I'm, I'm making this up as I go along, but let's say you have something like, Uh, let's say something like this at the end of the game. I don't know. Here, we'll just put a bunch of other ones out. Okay, so the way you do a path, you find any cards that start and end with the same suit and go in a progressive order. So like on this random sampling I threw out, you would have a path here where you could go four, no, never 
four, five. That'd just be a two card path. You could have one here that goes three, four, five, or you could go three, four, six, seven, or here's a four, five, because you know they have to end and begin in the same suit. Or, and like this would not work, even though these both end in the same suit, six, three, you can't go six, three. Just throw out a couple more. Uh, you know, here's a real small path that would go two, four, right? It could be a path where it'd be like this, because that matched two, three, four. So then when you score, you look at those paths. We'll go over that in a second. But before you can score, ah, okay, let's pretend like that was your end. The, the game ends when there's no more cards in the library to draw, but you should still have seven cards in your hand-ish. One, two, three, four, five. So let's say you have seven. So before you can score, there's something called a right to score. And this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So let's say we got to this point where this is your layout, right? But now, here's where you run into trouble. Before anybody can score, every player has to come up with a right to score. And it sounds more complicated than it is, and I didn't understand it until I played a few times. But what it is, after the game, they'll go down the list of cards, and you'll show what's in your hand. And then you add up whoever has the highest score of those cards in their hand. There's an exception that if you have an eight, it counts as a zero. But so for this example, you'd start with the blue spruce and I as player one only has one of these and it'd be a two. So if player two can add up more blue spruces in their hand, then they would be able to score on blue spruces and I would not. Now that wouldn't even matter for this because I only have one blue spruce. Then you go down the list. So the next one is say, what does that say? Cassia? I know about as much about trees as I do dogs. What's that look like? The yellow one. Okay. Again, I only have one Cassia. It's a five. But if the other players, Cassia is left in their hand, add up to less than five, I would have the right to score. And on a tie, you both have the right to score. So I actually do have a path with a Cassia, so let's pretend like I got that. So we'll just keep that here to, to say that I got the right to score. And like I said, you go down each of those and you can mark off who has the right to score and who doesn't. So let's just say for this example, when we get to the uh, Royal Poinasias, correct me again, the right to score would add up to two plus eight, but that eight becomes a zero when it's left in your hand, so it'd actually be two. But let's just pretend the opponent didn't have any of those in their hand. And let's say I got the right to score on this and this. So then you tally up the scores. So I'd have, and you look for the paths. And again, your paths can go, if you have multiple paths, you can only pick one. So on this example, Sorry, if you have multiple paths using the same starting and ending card, you can only use one or the same suit. So like on this example, the Cassie is you'd have this, this, and this. They would add up. And let's pull up the, there are a few um, little caveats on the score. So here it is from the book. You get one for each card in the path, one for an additional if the path is at least four cards long, one additional if it begins with a one, two additional if it ends with an eight. So using that on the Cassias, you'd only get three points here because that's the only path you have. It's less than four cards. It doesn't have a one or an eight. So you get three points there. Then you can look at the Royal Pantasinas, however that's said. And here you've got a couple of different paths. So you could go three, four, whoops, three, four, seven, or four, five. So you'd have two there, 
or three here. And so you take the longest one, which would be this, you'd get three points for that one. You could not say go three, three, four, because that doesn't increment a tie. So you have to go three, four, seven. So you'd add up the scores. You write them in the book. Whoever wins, wins, and then you can put it away. So I shouldn't say I hate the game. It's got a lot of strategy. It's got a lot of chance. I'm not a, I'm never a fan of getting to the end of the game and spending a half hour trying to figure out and tally up the points. So that's, that's my big complaint with it. And the cards are real slippery. But on the bright side, it is a creative idea. This right to score thing actually adds really good balance to the game and it simplifies it. Like, you know, in this example, there are only two paths I could add up on. If they didn't have the right to score, you'd be looking at all sorts of combos and make scoring even more complicated. And again, the art is beautiful. I mean, look at that. It reminds me of well, Final, Final Fantasy, some of the middle Final Fantasies a little bit. But anyhow, that's it for the game. I hope this wasn't too confusing. Leave me a comment if you have any questions and I'll, I'll clarify things. Give this a try, and if you like this game, definitely let me know. I'd like to hear about your experiences. I'll try it a few more times with the kids and and uh, see if I change my opinion of it. But that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with another one soon. So until then, have a great weekend.